Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be cooking up some grub for my family. This is a combination of breakfast, one lunch, and then a couple of dinners. Now, one of the things that really keep me going during the day is coffee. You know I'm a coffee person, and I wanna talk about today's sponsor in the video, Javi Coffee. Javi Coffee sent me their new instant latte to try, and I gotta tell you, I'm absolutely impressed with it, and I think you will be as well. And one of the toughest jobs about working on these videos is the editing. Editing takes the longest, and it's definitely the most tedious. And when it comes to videos like this where you have to do voiceovers, it requires you to talk into the microphone as well and be able to clip any mistakes you make speaking as well as matching it with the video that you have on hand. So it's several steps and it can turn into a long day of editing. Javi Coffee is helping me go through the day and I think it would help you as well. Javi Coffee is a reasonable price and it's low sugar as well, so that really helps with me. I don't have diabetes just yet, but it does run in my family, so I'm always looking out for my sugar and making sure that I don't overindulge. So only three grams of sugar per cup is a great way to achieve that. If you're looking for a cheap and delicious way to get your caffeine fix, besides hitting up the local coffee joint, I hope you give Javi Coffee a try. Make sure you use my link for an exclusive discount. So thank you Javi Coffee for sponsoring this video. All right guys, so let's get into it and let's see what meals I made for my family this week. For this first breakfast, I have this blazing buffalo chicken sausage. Not something that we have tried before, so I'm interested to see how it turns out. It did have a kind of a chewy, rubbery texture. I'm cooking this in some olive oil. Now, this is a bit excessive on the olive oil, I will admit. I was trying to finish off that bottle and had way more in there than I thought I did. So it's a bit heavy on the oil side, but I'm also going to put my eggs in here too, so it'll even out. I did add a splash of water to these eggs. This is six eggs right now. I like adding water to it because when it cooks, it steams. It helps make super fluffy eggs. I'm going to go ahead and caramelize both sides. The browned, like you don't just want to brown your meat, you want to brown it. So you can see those little bits in there that adds a lot of good flavor. Now I'm just going to pour my eggs in there and I'm going to slowly pull them forward into the middle and make a big fluffy egg. You could always cook this separately, taking the sausage out and then cook the eggs and made them that way. Maybe take a tortilla and make a burrito out of it. This is something that I do though. I like to just kind of do one pot wonders and that was it. So we added some cheese. I had Colby Jack cheese. That's what I had on hand. And that's what we had for breakfast. I ended up serving up some toast with some jam, and that was it. For this next breakfast, I have some bacon here, ground peppered bacon, and I'm going to be cooking up a little bit of this. And then I have some leftover potato wedges. Sometimes the kids and I like to go to um, this local deli and they have 25 cent ice cream cones and they have chicken tenders and potato wedges so we do that every once in a while as a little treat and we had some leftover potato wedges and then I have some of our own eggs from our chickens they're starting to lay now so we're starting to use up lots of eggs super excited about that so once the bacon is mostly cooked it's probably still got it like maybe five more minutes to finish off I'm going to add the potato wedges to those and get those cooked up we have a dozen of our farm fresh eggs and I'm going to add a splash of water in there as well. Someone also mentioned that you can add vinegar to it and that will help make fluffy eggs. So I wanted to give that a try as well one time. Now that it's been cooking about five more minutes, you can kind of see how the bacon is a little more cooked and the potatoes are heated and crunchy. So I'm going to go ahead and add the eggs to this. I'm going to do the same thing as I did before and just pull them forward. If you were to just stir this, then it would make a bunch of loose scrambled eggs. When you do it this way, I feel like it really helps make them fluffy and makes a big chunk of eggs. One of my kids got in there and wanted to help. His favorite part is help pulling the eggs forward. Now I didn't get to finish this on camera, but we ended up using the tortillas and we made a tasty breakfast burrito. For this last breakfast, I'm gonna be utilizing some of my home canned potatoes. These are russet potatoes that I canned back in 2021 and they need to get used up. So I'm gonna be making some hash. What I did was rinse them really well, get all of that starch water off, and then I'm gonna dice them pretty small. One of the tricks about canned potatoes is you wanna go small and you want it to be hot and a lot of fat is how you wanna get canned potatoes super crispy. I've always struggled with that, but it's some of the tricks that I have learned. So I'm trying to get them all roughly the same size. I don't know if I could can them smaller, if that would be efficient or if they would get too overcooked. I would love to know some feedback on that. I do have some freeze dried peppers and onions. So I'm gonna give this a try with my hash today. I haven't tried reconstituting these and cooking with them yet. So I think this would be a good experiment. 
I just filled that up halfway with water and I'm just going to let them sit in there while I do the rest of my prep and hopefully they will reconstitute and we'll be able to cook with them. That's kind of my goal. Now that my potatoes are all diced up, I do want to make sure that they're nice and dry. You don't want these to have any kind of moisture at all because that's what's going to help make a super crispy potato. So I like to lay them out on paper towels and then I also take one on top and kind of roll it around. You don't want to push down to smash them, but you want to press hard enough to absorb all the moisture. So our peppers and onion look pretty good. There's a little bit of liquid left down in there, so I could have added a little less, but I think those are going to work fine. I took a sniff of them and they smell just like peppers and onions. So now I'm going to add some bacon grease to my griddle. This is my Vever flat top griddle. You will see this a lot in this video. I can have it linked below. I'm going to add some of my cubed corned beef. You could also use canned corned beef. This is just left over from a roast. And then I'm going to add the diced potatoes on the bottom. If you don't want to overcrowd it, I might have overcrowded it a little bit, but that'll be okay. So you just want to make sure there's a nice thin layer. And then I decided to add the peppers and onions with the corned beef because I didn't want to put them on top of the potatoes. So the potatoes kind of need to cook a little longer. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that up and get that nice and flavorful. And then over here, while that's all cooking, I'm going to be making some eggs. I decided to add some green sriracha to my scrambled eggs this time. I think that would be pretty good. And I hear that adding hot sauce to eggs is good. So I'm going to give it a try. Nothing too spicy to burn the kids off, but just enough to add some flavor to it. So I'm going to have those scrambled and ready to go. Now I'm going to be pulling off this corned beef. It's already cooked, so I don't really need to cook it. I just want to get it warmed up and seared and get the peppers and onions cooked just a little bit. They were preserved or freeze dried raw, but adding the water and everything to them, they cooked pretty quickly. So now that I have all that off on there, I'm going to go ahead and give my potatoes a flip. I do wish I would have waited a little longer though. They say you just want to like forget your potatoes, like put them on there and just forget about them. That's how you get perfect potatoes because you want to get a super good crisp. But I went ahead and flipped these and got them searing on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and add my seasoning at this point. I'm going to add some kosher salt. I like to pour a little bit in my hand and then use my hand to spread it. And then I have some smoked paprika here as well as some pepper. I think that's going to be really good flavors. And I also like that the smoked paprika adds a good color to it when it sears. Now I'm adding more blobs of bacon grease because it's going to, it's getting a little dry. Those potatoes do soak up a lot of the fat that you choose to cook them in. So keep an eye on that and don't be afraid to add more to it if needed. Now that the potatoes are crispy like I would like, I'm going to go ahead and put them in a bowl lined with a paper towel to help soak up any of that grease. And then I'm going to be cooking the eggs next. I got Sir Gideon here ready to help with the eggs. He's been helping a lot. Anytime I'm in the kitchen, he wants to help cook. So we're going to pour a couple of the eggs on here so he can manage it a little better. And the best way to get your kids in the kitchen cooking is just to let them go. Like let them have a little project. Just let them know that that's their job. I'm kind of showing him how to move the spatula on the sides to scoot it away and get it close to the center. And then he's going to go on and finish that. It's amazing watching your kids learn how to cook and he realized that he needed the fifth spatula over and then he did some flipping. And that's a good thing about this grill too is that it works so well and it cooks the food really fast. So here we are, we got some great eggs cooked. I'm kind of just tossing the salt on there and then we're going to go ahead and pull this off. So it literally took probably under a minute, two minutes to cook a little bit of eggs. Now that one batch is cooked, we're going to go ahead and cook the rest of the eggs as well. These took the, This took up most of the grill, but you just got to make sure you catch it before it dribbles down into that grease catch pan there. I like that this grill can hold up to a dozen eggs and cook it within a reasonable amount of time, and it doesn't lose all its heat. It doesn't take long for it to perk back up and get back up to temperature. So Gideon's going to go ahead and pull off all those eggs. And now our setup is done. We have our corned beef with our peppers. We have our potatoes. And then we have our eggs. So in order to make this bowl, I'm going to put the eggs down first. I kind of figured that would be a good bottom layer. And then we're going to put the potatoes second. I should have made more. I say that every time I make potatoes. I'm like, oh, I should have made more. But I put a layer of those crispy potatoes down in there. And then I'm going to put the corned beef and peppers on top. The corned beef would have been nice if it was a, like shredded more than cubed, but it still turned out fantastic. And we got to top it all with ketchup. That's how my mom always had it. This is a keeper for sure, and you can never go wrong with corned beef hash. 
Hope you give it a try. I only have one lunch for you in this video this time, and that's because the kids have started eating lunch at school, so that has really helped a lot. But for this one, I have two boxes of regular Kraft mac and cheese, and then I have some frozen veggies that I'm going to be adding from the freezer. This is just ones that were on a hot bar and then frozen. I'm just gonna add those to try and add some extra veggies to the dish. I'm gonna add these at the same time that I cook the pasta, so that way that they heat up and they don't get too overcooked. Now I'm going to add a little bit of butter, the cheese packet, and then some 2% milk because that's what I have on hand. Another way that you can make this super smooth is take some of the pasta water and melt it with the packet of cheese. I find that that helps blend up the cheese and get it all melty so it's not, you don't get dry clumps of the powder if that makes sense. And then it needs a little bit of protein as well. I'm trying to make this like one dish and make it a little heartier than just mac and cheese. So I'm going to be adding in a can of canned chicken. I did strain this. Um, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, though. The kids did not like this. They're like, why did you ruin regular mac and cheese? I thought it was good, but I'm the only one who ate it. So be warned on that. Now let's move on to some dinners. For tonight, I'm making pork teriyaki bowls. So I have some rice here that I'm going to just be cooking on my electric stovetop here. I'm going to do two cups of rice to four cups of liquid. I have uh, two open things of turkey broth in my fridge, because why not? So I'm going to use those up. And then for that last little bit, I added some water. Using broth is really a great way to flavor rice when you cook it. And uh, just to let you know, yes, that was too small of a pot, so I did eventually have to upgrade. But I'm going to go ahead and get this started. It just cooks for 15 to 20 minutes on the stove. For the next step, I'm going to add a little olive oil to my pan here to get it heated up. And then over here, I have a pre-seasoned pork medallion that I have sliced thin. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I'm also going to add some paprika, and then I'm going to wash that lid. <laughs> but I'm going to add a little bit of paprika. I really like doing that for anything that I sear because it adds really great color. And this actually could have used a little bit more of it. When putting the meat in the pan, I always like to start on top and then work my way around. That way I know what piece went down first, and that helps for even cooking. So I started with one, worked my way around. We're gonna let these cook for a couple of minutes. Then I have these Brussels sprouts with bacon and cranberries. I have this in my freezer that I need to get cooked up and out of there. So I'm just gonna throw it in the air fryer. I'm gonna have it frozen and it's going to go in there for about eight minutes. And that's gonna be cooking while the rice and the pork is working. So now that the pork is cooked for a couple minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it. And you see that beautiful red color? That's the paprika. So I would really, suggest start using either paprika or smoked paprika. I like chipotle paprika as well. It really helps in your cooking and adds a bunch of good, uh, not only flavor, but color as well. So once this batch is all done, I'm gonna add just a little bit of more oil to make sure that there's enough coated there. And then I'm going to put another round of the pork. Now the bottom is getting that caramelized skin on it, but don't worry about that because that will come out when we deglaze the pan. So just keep going. You don't want to overcrowd your pan. Make sure you have a good thin layer and do it in as many batches as you need. So now that I have that it's all cooked, I'm going to put the rest of the pork in there. And then I'm going to open, this is just a teriyaki, like smokehouse teriyaki pack sauce that I've had in my fridge for quite a while that has just been staring at me. So I'm finally getting it used up. And I'm just going to pour it in there and that's going to help get all of that flavor off the bottom of it. And then it's going to simmer for a bit and it's, thicken up a little bit. And now the Brussels sprouts are completely done. It took about 10 minutes and they cooked beautifully in there. I love the fact of using the air fryer instead of heating up your whole entire oven. This turned out really well and everybody, including husband, liked it and he doesn't even like Brussels sprouts. So that worked out really well. The rice turned out perfect. I love the trick of cooking it with any kind of chicken stock. Even if you have like the chicken bouillon cubes, those work really great. So I put a little bit of rice and then I'm going to put like our Brussels sprout, bacon, cranberry mixture. And then we're going to scoop some of the pork with that sweet teriyaki sauce on there. And this was really good. I do wish I would have sliced the pork a little thinner, like in strips. I think that would have been easier to eat. And I used up a bunch of different things from my pantry that I needed to get used up. So that made me happy. For this next dinner, I have some rib meat here that I cooked in the crock pot. This is flank steak meat that I just shredded and I have a whole container of it so it's good for a couple of different meals. So today I'm just going to be making kind of like a beef stroganoff with it. I have some onions here. This is just half of a white onion, I believe. 
that I'm going to be cooking up. I am going to add a little bit of butter because I just like that addition of butter and oil. I, the oil helps with the high smoke point and the butter adds with the flavor. So we're just going to be caramelize our onions a little bit. I'm not going to go for the whole shebang of caramelized onions. I just kind of want them cooked a little bit. And then we're going to add some of our rib meat. I used probably about a pound's worth of this cooked meat. One thing I like to do for quick dinners is just to have a protein cooked up and in your fridge. And then it's easy to throw stuff together if you have the main meat already cooked and ready to go. So that's what I did with this. I cooked a whole bunch of this and then we've just been eating off this the whole week. So I'm just shredding it and heating it up with the onions. I'm going to add a can of mushrooms as well because we are a mushroom family. And then some shots of who's your sister sauce. Worcestershire sauce adds a good flavor to a lot of beef dishes. So I tend to add it a lot. And then I'm just going to add some pepper. And we're just going to saute this, heat this all up. Everything's pretty much already cooked. So we just need to get it all heated through. I did decide that I wanted to add a little more meat. One thing about kind of eyeballing your recipes and just cooking from scratch and not following a recipe is that you just eyeball it. <laughs> like you just notice that uh, there's a lot of onion and mushroom and not quite enough meat. So I can put some more meat in this. And then there's always leftovers, which is a good plus. So don't be afraid to add more ingredients if you feel like you need to as you're cooking. All right, so this is all heated up and done. I tried a piece of the meat. I find it very flavorful. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this off. I'm gonna reuse the same pan because you can see there's lots of crusties down there and we're gonna make a gravy. So again, I'm gonna do half oil, half butter and you're gonna get that melted down. You could use any kind of fat for this though. Like if that rib meat had a lot of fat on it, then you could use some of that. I'm just gonna do butter and oil for this. Now I am going to be adding flour to this. This is some whole wheat flour because I'm trying to get it used up. And you really just want equal parts flour to oil. You don't want huge chunks of it. You just kind of want to paste. But it's important that you let this cook for a good minute because you want to make sure that you get all of that flour taste out. You got to cook your flour. And then we're just going to add some stock. Beef stock would be ideal in this, but I have turkey stock. So this is what I'm going to be using and it turned out really well. Just any kind of homemade stock is really fantastic. If you guys haven't started making your own stock yet, I highly suggest it. So you're just going to be mixing this around. A whisk would be ideal, but I'm, I'm just using my spatula. That's what I have on hand. And I just kept moving it around as it was cooking and I got all those lumps dispersed. And now as it starts bubbling and stuff, that's when it's going to start thickening up. You do want to make sure you're taste testing so you can see I took a taste of it there just to see if it needed any more seasoning. Salt is usually what it means. I do not salt my stocks when I make them so everything in my cooking usually requires salt in it. And then I decided to throw a little bit more pepper in it. So you do want your gravy to be flavorful but also remember that you're going to be adding all of that meat and stuff back in as well so you don't want it to be too overpowering. But you do want to make sure that every single layer of your cooking has flavor. So if you were to serve this with pasta, you're salting your pasta water. You're making sure your meat is seasoned. And then you're also making sure your gravy is seasoned and tastes good. To me, the whole goal is when you serve this at the table, you don't want to make anybody reach for salt and pepper. Like it should be perfectly seasoned. I am going to add some sour cream at the last minute because I kind of like that creamy stroganoff feeling to it. You could use any kind of meat in this ground beef stroganoff is really good as well if you don't have sour cream you could always use greek yogurt as well that's a great substitute now uh, i'm going to taste it one more time just to make sure with that sour cream it didn't dull it down too much and it's good to go so i just have some egg noodles here rice would also be a great option over this or a baked potato would be good so pretty much served over any kind of starch is the way to go they want to add a shot of parsley because it makes it pretty and that's what we had for dinner for this next dinner i'm going to be using that same rib meat trying to utilize it in a different way we're making potato pancakes i'm going to add a can of this broccoli and cheese condensed soup i know the cheese soup kind of works really well like as a cheese substitute so i'm like you know what why not try and get this used up let's see how it works in potato pancakes but i've never added a condensed soup before so this will be an experiment and then I'm going to add the rib meat. I'm going to add some sharp cheddar and then just some salt and pepper, also some flour. That's going to help make them stick together really well. The rib meat was cold, so it took a little bit of force to shred it. And I really liked that broccoli can in there. It added some moisture to it as well. And then the potatoes were just leftover instant potatoes from one of those packets. And then I decided to add two eggs with it. I remember with potato pancakes that you usually add eggs as well. 
So I added two of our eggs. I'm really loving the variety of colored eggs that I'm getting for my chickens because all of the different breeds, it's a, an addiction, I tell you. And then I decided to add some of that parsley. I love dried parsley, you guys. Like it just adds that extra green. And then I'm gonna oil my grill. Like with the hash, the potatoes absorb a lot of the grease and the fat that you use. This is olive oil that I have in that container as well. So I'm just going to use a spoon and kind of plop them on there. No particular measurement and then I'm going to spread them out so they're kind of thin. I have also used a cookie scoop to scoop them out before so they're more uniform. Now I used a rubber spatula. I think that's where I started to go wrong here because it did stick to the griddle a little bit. So I one needed a little more oil and two I needed to use something that wasn't plastic or rubber. So I ended up switching that up. I added a little drop of oil on the bottom of it so hoping that it wouldn't stick on the other side. And then with this one, I didn't look that, let that one cook long enough, so it kind of fell apart. So you just kind of got to play with it. And the more you, that you do it, the more you realize what mistakes you make, and then you fix it. Like here, I switched to a stainless steel spatula. Much better choice. You can see how it really gets under the crispy areas. And instead of the crispy part getting left on the grill, it's actually getting stuck to the pancake. So that's what you're looking for. Another thing I like to do is I like to salt them as soon as I flip them or as soon as I put them on the plate. It's kind of like that extra salt as soon as the potato comes out of the fryer, you know? And it turned out super cheesy, super gooey, and fantastic. So I hope you give that a try. If you have an extra can of soup, try it in some potato pancakes. For tonight's dinner, we are going to be making homemade rumens. So I'm going to start with some Thousand Island dressing, super easy to make. You're just going to have mayonnaise. I'm planning on using this for the whole rest of the week, so I am making a lot. This is mayonnaise, some paprika, black pepper, salt, sweet pickle relish. You have this, or you could use dill if you prefer that. I happen to have sweet on hand, so that's what I'm going to be using. Just a couple of tablespoons, depending on what you like. And then you can use small diced white onion, but we have some sweet pickle red onions here that I made a couple of weeks ago and they are ready to start getting used up. So I'm going to go ahead and dice these up super small and that's what I'm going to be using instead of a white onion. Now it also needs ketchup, but I forgot about that at this moment and we ended up adding that later. So the ketchup is what gives it that really pink color. Thousand Island dressing is very easy to make, so I hope you guys will try making it at home. I definitely need to start making more salad dressings at home as well. Now I have marbled rye bread here is what we're going to be using. This came as one big loaf, so I did slice it kind of thick, but I think that turned out pretty well. My son Gideon is eager there to help me. He loves being in the kitchen with me. So we are going to toast this. I like to toast it on both sides so that way when you add the Thousand Island dressing to it, it doesn't make the bread all soggy. So now here we go. Now I remembered the ketchup. So I'm going to add that at this point. And then I also have on the counter here some sauerkraut that also is like a cabbage and kale mixture. I have sliced corned beef and then some sliced Swiss cheese. So those are the components to our Reuben. Gideon's making sure that that's nice and stirred in. So now that we have one side of the bread toasted, we're going to flip it over and then you're going to add your Thousand Island. I like adding it to both sides because I like it. a lot of dressing on my sandwiches. That's up to you though. That's a good thing about making stuff at home. You get to decide what you want on there. So we're going to put one slice of Swiss cheese and then I'm going to heat up the corned beef kind of like on the side of the grill there just to get it heated up and help warm that cheese. Another good thing to do would be to put that cheese on top of the corned beef as it's heating up in the grill and then it'll melt over it. That's a good way to do it as well if you for sure want melted cheese. Now I'm putting the corned beef on the other side of it because we're going to be putting the sauerkraut on top of the corned beef. This is just the way that we're doing it. It doesn't have to go a certain way or a certain setup. If you wanted to heat up that sauerkraut, you could easily do that as well. I always like the combination of hot and cold, especially on a sandwich. So that you're going to have the hot bread and the hot corned beef with the cold sauerkraut. I think that's a good combination, but again, very versatile. Do whatever you and your family like. Now that the Reuben sandwich is assembled, we're going to take that top slice of bread and put it on top of our corned beef and sauerkraut mixture. And then I'm going to press it down a little bit. That's going to help make it a little bit flatter. 
as well get the cheese a little closer to the grill to help melt that down a bit. You do want to make sure that you don't burn the sides so I went ahead and flipped it over get that other side kind of toasty and then that's all there is to it. Now I did cut this with a serrated knife and that ended up being a mistake so definitely make sure that you have a chef's knife or a paring knife or something to cut this with but this was absolutely delicious. The kids loved it and then I ended up serving it with a side of tater tots. So definitely give these homemade Rubens a try. And just like that, I whip up a couple of different meals for my family of five. What was your favorite meal and what are some meals that you like to whip up when you're crunched for time? And don't forget about Javi Coffee. All the information is linked below. You're definitely not going to miss overpriced coffee when you got Javi on your side. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll catch you next time on Mama Bairds.